Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is it. This is the big one. Manchester United face Copenhagen in the Champions League in a must-win game. A big game. So we've got the big, bleh, the big guns out. Get me words out there. Ronaldo Brown joins us. How you doing, brother? You talking about me and my pure gym, Annex. So. Yeah, is that yeah, what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. Pure gym, JD gym, every gym. Yeah. Just, just, just skip leg day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, right. uh, enough of that nonsense <laughs> anyway let's get into it hey, uh, hey, shit happens. <laughs> um, we say must win almost every week at Manchester United Football Club but this one if we want to stay in the Champions League it kind of is it kind of is um, losing your first three games in Champions League is, is probably not the best recipe to get through the group <laughs> stage you know what I mean um, I f it will end up looking like we'll need everything to go our way if we did dr drop points or, or lose again but also it's almost like the incentive goes out of it if we can't qualify because it's then are you just trying to become are you trying to come third to go into the Europa League which that's also a double edged sword that's well a it? double edged sword where people don't necessarily want that either especially the way that we have been performing um, I think Europa League Thursdays I know it's another opportunity for silverware but it can derail your domestic season especially when the, the league campaign is as competitive as it is where you've got Newcastle and you've got Villa and you've got Tottenham flying now as well. Yeah. So if we're gonna make top four, top five. I don't know if Europa League would be the best route. So we need to make sure that we at least have a decent run for the next few games. We're capable of beating Copenhagen, Galatasaray, um, and maybe getting a result at home against Bayern. I think we can beat so, Bayern at home. So I think it's doable. I don't think we will, but it's doable. But we put the pressure on ourselves. And I don't remember the last time we've actually lost three, four games in the, in the Champions League before. Um, that's a, a good question. You know I mean, mean? we're going to find out shortly yeah. when that when that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you said, if you lose your first three games of the Champions League, you're up against it. And there's, there's there's bigger sort of connotations of that as well. It's not just the facts of win, of losing. Sorry, your first three um, games not winning, losing the first three games of the Champions League. It's also that adds more pressure on the manager because yeah. you've lost to. Spurs in the league to Arsenal in the league to Brighton in the league to Crystal Palace in the league then you've lost to Bayern Munich to Galatasaray and Copenhagen in the in the Champions League yeah. it's like everyone's looking it's going what's going on here we've already heard rumours I want to say this rumours that if Sir Jim Ratcliffe comes in with is it Dave Brailsford yeah. his, his advisor and also maybe even Paul Mitchell they might if things go carry on going wrong for Tanag look at someone else so you feel that there could be a bit of pressure under on Eric Tanag, and this would add to it massively if you were to lose your first three games, especially if two of those games were home ties against Copenhagen and Galatasaray. Anyway, I'm not saying yeah. that's going to yeah. happen. I'm just saying worst case scenario. One reason it won't happen is because of Rasmus Hoyland, yeah? The absolute superstar that is Hoyland. Not quite been happening for him in the league, in the Premier League, in terms of scoring goals. I know he's putting some good performances, but in the Champions League, he's looked very sharp. Yeah, I think Hoyland's been relatively unlucky in the Premier League. He's had performances where he's played well, but not, not necessarily scored. And as you talk about football, game of fine margins, inches, that Rashford. Sheffield United. Yeah, Sheffield United. Say the Rashford. Yeah. I was gutted across because ways, just like think, just not reached yeah, it. Yeah, that would have. I mean, it's like that would have done a lot for the team. It would have done a lot for Marcus Rashford because that's another assist for, yeah. him, for Rasmus Hoyland. He's already got a couple. Hoyland obviously gets his Premier League goal, which he, I always. I mean, you yeah, mean yeah. you talk about this a few weeks ago. I always worry about things becoming a thing, and I'll yeah. explain that. If you don't score in the Premier League for a little while, it becomes a thing. People yeah. start going. How many goals he got? Oh, Mudrick's got more goals than him. Oh, like all the memes start doing the rounds. I'm not saying Rasmus Hoyland's glued to his phone looking at memes, but it gathers a little bit of momentum where people start questioning you going, yeah, always a flop, always this, always that. And he's only 20 years old. Yeah. Obviously, he's only 20 years old, but he's. I think the goals in the Champions League has brought him a little bit of leeway yeah. in, a, in a way. I know we had a goal against Brighton that was disallowed as well. Brighton. Very Again, and it was, that um, was Marcus to him as well, wasn't it? Again, very unlucky. You know I mean? he, he had another goal disallowed in the Champions League. He could have had four instead of three. Yeah, I mean, he had the um, there was the Galatasaray. Yeah, there was a goal. I think between he just offside when yeah. he, when he's, he before showed, his second was it before his second. Where he showed great composure, received it, sent the defender, and he smashed it into the to the roof of the net. And he's obviously been playing pretty well for Denmark as well. I think the goals will come from the Premier yeah. League, and we need to remember, Hoyland is twenty years old. I know sometimes you look at him; it's hard to believe that because he's a he's a beast of a he's, man he, he is isn't he? he's a big developed. old boy and, and I think when the goals come they're gonna like it almost be like a domino effect 
and I think he'll score the game after that, the game yeah. after that. I see a very, very promising world class potential in Highland. I'm not exaggerating. So I don't, I'm not worried about him. And I think he could be, again, the difference maker in the game tomorrow. Yeah, 100%. Especially get to a fellow Denmark team. The game yeah. tonight. <laughs> the game tonight, you mean, Ronaldo? Oh, the game tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Telly World. So, with all that being said, give us your predicted 11 for tonight's game. All right. So, my predicted 11 is. I think the only surprise you'll see in there, a surprise he's been playing well recently, but he's not necessarily a player I've been a massive fan of, but credit where credit's due, he's been playing well and he's probably, I'd put him just over Lindelof and that is Maguire, but I'll go through Fair the, enough. Go the on. general. So, well, let's, the, so, let's go, got, talk about talk about your back go, five then. So Onana, you can stick I'll him with a goalkeeper. Yeah. I'll go, go on. Yeah, go Onana, I'll hopefully the return of Regulon, left back. Missed him. <laughs> we've missed the left back, haven't we? I think we missed him, missed his impetus, missed his energy, missed a little bit of his endeavour that he showed, that kind of... It was a shining light on him, but it was almost a bigger detriment on, or a bigger indictment on the rest of the team. Yeah, because he, yeah, like he, like he, he was looked like he actually was actually playing for the badge, and yeah. the others looked like they just going through a training session. Yeah, exactly. So a centre-half partnership of Maguire and Varane with the low right-back, who I think is playing exceptionally well as well. Well said. And I've gone for a midfield three that looks very more very balanced to me of Amrabat, Eriksson and Fernandez in the 10 and I've gone for the front three of Rashford, Hoyland and Anthony. Mine, mine's very similar. Go on. Sorry, I interrupted you. There were a couple of players that I was kind of Eriksson or Mount I was kind of ooming and ahhing about and then I've got Anthony I didn't know whether to play Mount there instead of him yeah. but I thought Anthony was pretty sharp against Sheffield United and all these goal contributions have, have significantly dried up of late but I think he offers a lot to the team from a tactical um, kind of positional play perspective than people might re um, realise in terms of controlling the game, etc. So that's the team that I feel like is the most balanced and makes the most sense going against the Copenhagen team tomorrow who, tomorrow or tonight, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who, who, who play like, they do actually, actually generally play quite front, front foot, but if they do sit back and kind of soak up pressure at Old Trafford a little bit, I think it's important that you've got players like Ericsson, who's good on the ball, very creative, um, and Anthony who can actually hold possession. Because if you make it a basketball game where the team's in balance, which can be the case of a midfield that has Mount and um, Fernandez in it, I wanted to make sure that I counted it with players that are generally better at holding the ball a little bit because Copenhagen can be quite awkward. They can press front foot sometimes and they can sit off. So we need to be able to counteract that. Yeah, it all makes a lot of yeah. sense. I agree with what you said about yeah. Maguire. He has been playing well. I know he gets a lot of stick off a lot of people, but yeah. you can't really fault him for his last few performances. I think they've been very good. Mm. Diogo Dalot, I'm a big fan of him. I think he, he deserves his credit this season because whilst he's not perfect, he's been moved around a lot. He's played well in different positions, mainly, well, right back and left back. Yeah. Obviously got that, that goal as well at Sheffield United, a vital goal. So yeah, I think we need to give him a little bit more credit. And one thing he, he does do, which his teammates don't always do as well, is he plays every game, unlike the, the merry-go-round uh, left back and even Aaron wan -Bissaka as well, who's out. Availability, isn't it? <laughs> Availability is the best ability, as Ronaldo Brown once said, and he was very, very right. Um, with all that in mind, I've got, here's my team very similar to yours the only difference i've gone for is i've gone for mason mount instead of christian erickson i've dropped um bruno fernandez a little bit deeper i don't know i understand your point everything you've said makes sense to me and yeah. the manager did speak yesterday about christian erickson he praised him but he also said there's tough competition for midfield places i just wonder whether mount might get the nod he's obviously got a good record in champions league i thought he played well for the opening spell against Galatasaray as well. So I feel like he might get the nod ahead of Ericsson, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it's it could go either way that one, but I completely agree with everything else you've said. Um, you mentioned FC Copenhagen. Yeah. Obviously, a, a team that always does well in their league, but their league isn't anywhere near the standard of the Premier League. Mm. What? Well, Looking at their, their sort of last five results there, obviously lost to Bayern Munich 2-1, they lost to Matijiland, they lost to, uh, they won in the Danish Cup against Leipzig 9-0, I don't know how much you can look into that one. I mean, they, they beat teams you'd expect them to beat, usually don't they? And then obviously they struggled against Bayern Munich. Yeah, what top of the league. Mm. Yeah, what, what can you expect from, from this Copenhagen team? Um, they, are, they are a decent side. Um, yeah. they, they ran Galatasaray and, and Bayern pretty close. And... As is the case quite often with teams that excel in their league in the lesser leagues in Europe, 
they still carry a significant threat going forward and they do have talent, talented players in forward areas and that's the same thing for Copenhagen. Yeah. It's the type of team that they have a decent coach in Nystrup and they are they are very well drilled, well drilled and organised. I don't know if they sometimes might have a little bit of complacency when they play against some of the teams that are in their league. Yeah. But they're definitely capable of going to a United or going to a team of that kind of calibre and making a game difficult and also posing a threat. Obviously, they've got forward players that are, are quick, they're tricky. They've, they've got a decent amount of variety in the front three as well. Um, and they kind of mix up their strategy out of possession, as I said earlier when I was picking up the team. Sometimes they do press high and they are quite intense in the way that they press and they can make it uncomfortable for you, but sometimes they can sit off and be hard to beat as well. So it's difficult to know what to expect from them. But when I said that I wanted that kind of control in mid midfield, I wanted it to be less of a basketball game and less transitional because I think if you make the game transitional against a team like Copenhagen, they have enough quality up, up top to kind of hurt us. And we've shown that even against lesser teams. Yeah. So if we're on a weekend struggling against the likes of Sheffield United who are not better than Copenhagen, yeah. do you know what I mean? We can't really look at them and be like, oh, they play in the Denmark League. They can't pose enough of a threat because they do have talented players, as we talk about in the, the likes of Alinusi, um, Rooney Bardi, who's a talented 17-year-old wonder kid that they've got playing there or not. I look forward to United's £80 million pound Job, signing of him. He might, he might, Rooney, Bard, Rooney Bardi might put his name on the map a little bit tomorrow if he plays well. Because yeah. he, he is one of those where he starts sometimes, he doesn't start sometimes. Obviously, he's a 17-year-old kid, but when you watch him, his play style is almost like a bit of a mixture of um, Pedro Neto and Odegaard. If you really? look at him, he's almost like a hybrid of the two. He's very, very good. Do I you mean, know what I mean? So, six, six goals in the league already for a 17-year-old. You can't ignore that, and be at the Danish league, but it's still very, very good for a very yeah, young, young player. And you've got players you're familiar with, like Elian Usi. They've got like the likes of Gon Goncalves as well, or Gonçalves, the way you pronounce it. Yeah. Portuguese, and you've got, they've got Victor Clayson up front, who's a bit of a, the typical Nordic striker. He's like a target man. He's yeah. big, he's bold, and... and he can cause a problem as well. They've got a lot of players. They've got Larson who comes off the bench as well as a forward. Sometimes he starts. And I think he might have around five or six goals as well this season. They are very, what do you call, front heavy. Do you right. know what I mean? Like, if we allow them to get space and time and counter-attacks and transitions, their front players can definitely cause a problem. We can't we can't ignore that. Yeah. And we can't dismiss it. And this is a must-win game, so... We, we can't allow any form of complacency to creep into our play here because like you said this is a team yeah. that is capable of giving us a game capable of beating us as well let's not forget that a little bit of intrigue here it's not mm. likely to happen but <laughs> Emil and Oscar who are Rasmus Hoyland's brothers are both on the books at FC Copenhagen they've barely played for them but there is a scenario where you could have three brothers on the pitch at the same time I don't know if that's likely to happen but you never know. Stranger but, things have happened. It would be interesting to say the least. I hope he doesn't start doesn't start any mind games with him. What a program! We're winning. They bring his brothers on. What a program! And, that was, and you know what I mean. And like his mum's looking at him <laughs> from the from the stands, shaking her head. Like Rasmus, what are you doing to your brothers, man? Your little brother. It would be a that. proud moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, it would be. In a, but I know the chances are low, but anything's possible. Yeah, maybe it, they, maybe they get a Champions League debut against um, Manchester United away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, if they do, I hope the the brother Gordon has team. a little bit of that sibling rivalry in him. Where Gordon he's like, I'm going to show them who the gaffer is here, who's the, the, the main dog, and just smashes in loads of goals. <laughs> sends them crying. Sends them all crying. Yeah. Um, with all that being said, give us your score predictions, please, Ronnie. My score prediction, would, I, I think we don't get a clean sheet. Well, that's not, that's you know not I mean? the most Which outrageous is, claim I've ever heard in my life, yeah. I'm being honest. Especially for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty you safe to mean? assume that. Um, especially Old Trafford, we've, we've we've been very, very poor defensively, very yeah. open, and um, I'm predicting a three-one win. I was going to go two-one because I thought it'd be tighter than people might think. Yeah, but I'm going to be a little bit positive, a bit more optimistic, and I'm going to go three-one to United, and I think Holland gets on the score sheet again. <sighs> I'm I'm sorry, but I think we might turn up for this one. I do. I just think. Must win, under the lights, Bobby Charlton tributes before the game, obviously. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we do turn up for this because we've got no excuses, really. Yes, we've got injuries, but we've still got enough players available, especially with Regulon coming back, that makes a difference, that we should be able to, to take it to um, FC Copenhagen and really get at him. I'm going to go 4-1 United, you know. I am. I think we might batter him. 
I hope so. Okay. Uh, I want to hear from you lot. Get your phone out, film yourself in landscape, 30 seconds, and send us your score prediction to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. Ronnie, always a pleasure, my friend. Where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter. Not the X app. Good lad. Um, Ronaldo Brown underscore 98 if you want to give me a little follow on there. Uh, you know where to find me as well, all over this channel. So make sure you are hitting like, share, and subscribe. That's been Ronaldo Brown. I've been Jay Moy. This has been a preview of the FC Copenhagen game. Thanks for watching.